Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to share with you what I believe are the three most overlooked features of the Logic Compressor. First of all, let's just gush a little about how awesome this compressor is. It comes included within Logic and right out of the gate you have seven emulations to choose from, many of which emulate analog gear. For example, the Studio FET here emulates an 1176 style compressor, the classic VCA, a DBX style compressor, the vintage VCA SSL, and so on and so forth. Right out of the tin, where many companies like Waves and Slate and Universal Audio are trying to push on you this idea that your DAW doesn't have the vibe and the life and the character of analog gear and that you need to spend money on it, Logic includes it. That's amazing. But I found when I got started learning about compressors and how to use them, you're just trying to figure out what the heck a compressor is to begin with. What do these knobs do? What do they mean? Can you hear it? I don't know. And we just hang out in the ratio, threshold, attack, and release world, right? Like that's enough knobs to begin with. And you can't even begin to fathom what the heck is going on over here with the rest of the knobs. But it turns out once you get past learning how to use a compressor, there's more value out of this compressor to be gained. And so I want to share that with you. Number one, what I believe is most overlooked in the Logic Compressor is the distortion mode here. And what is the distortion mode? Essentially, it is emulating analog saturation and distortion, right? So by itself here, the 1176 emulation, the Studio FET, it's reacting in a certain way and it's compressing in a certain way. But you're not getting that vibe in life that Universal Audio Slate are pushing on you, right? It's just a very clean compressor. But what's awesome is Logic includes this distortion mode so you can add that analog emulated sound, that vibe, that tone. And you have three to choose from, soft, hard, clip. So I've got a drummer track here, and I've got trusty Kyle by my side on his rock kit, and we're going to take a listen to these drums, and I'm going to flip through these distortion modes so you can hear what it's doing as we add them in. So if you're wearing headphones, which I suggest, what happens is, is that with each emulation, it's adding a tonal characteristic to our drum track, right? And it's kind of funny that soft, hard clip, where to my ears, it should be clip should be soft, hard should be hard, and soft should be clip, because the soft is the loudest and more, most aggressive tone, right? So when I flipped on the clip, the track sort of sits up a little straighter, right? It gets a little more assertive, not a ton. When I flip to hard, it gets a little more punch, and then soft has the most aggressive tonal shift. It's fatter, the snare and the kick punch a little harder, it dredges up more of the room tone. It's just, it's awesome. So 90% of the time, when I use the Logic Compressor, I'll set my compressors to soft to give it that fatness, that warmth, that tone, okay? So then from there, that's that's great, that's fine and dandy. I suggest that you look into the distortion modes because it'll add that vibe and that life that everybody's pushing on you. But you can take this even further. The number two thing that is most overlooked is the makeup gain here. And this took me years to figure out what this even did. I had no idea. Typically, the output gain, a gain knob after the compressor, you use that to bring the volume up or down so you can match the level to the pre-compressed signal, right? So you have your drummer track, you're playing it, and then you're adjusting the compressor knobs and you use the makeup gain to adjust the volume so when you bypass this, you're not being tricked by the change in volume because sometimes when you mess with a compressor, it gets louder or quieter, right? And you wanna make an educated decision. Well, that's what I thought forever, but why do we have this output gain knob over here? Why do we need two output gain knobs just to drive up volume. Well, it turns out that the makeup gain is a step before the output gain. The output gain is strictly volume. It's just like match volume, that's it. 
makeup gain, if you have distortion set to any of these three emulations, you're driving the gain into the distortion, which is very interesting. Analog gear has this tone and it also has a ceiling, right? It's like a limiter. The limiter has a ceiling. Once you set that threshold and if you push the volume of a signal or a track into the limiter, it's not going to exceed that threshold. So instead it'll distort and it'll get flatter. It's the same sort of concept, but analog gear kind of adds this uh, juju, this nice characteristic, or you can push it really hard and totally smash your tracks to bits. It's easier to show than to explain, so let me show you. So I'm going to keep this distortion set to soft, and I'm just going to start bringing up the makeup gain. I'm going to bring down the output gain so it doesn't get too gnarly and too loud. Let's take a listen to what happens. As you can hear, the track starts to bloom, it starts to get more saturated, and then it becomes distorted and aggressively distorted. And depending on the style of music that you work with, electronic music, hip hop, this might be a very desirable tone. Rock music, it doesn't really make that much sense for, because uh, rock music tends to hang in the world of natural tones. So, but this is cool. I can dial back the makeup gain and I can find a good spot where it's saturating, it's distorting, but it's not overwhelming, right? Or it's a little more tasteful. Let's try that. And as you can see, I'm using the output gain to match the level the best I can. So when I bypass this, I can understand if I'm making a positive difference or a negative difference, right? So it's still a little aggressive on the distortion front. The third thing that people most often overlook with a logic compressor is the mix knob here. Now for years when I used compressors, I was like, why would I want to mix in the compressor? I need to compress my track. It's designed to, you know, to make the track a little more squashed. Why would I want to have 20% of compressor in there and not 100%? Well, let me bring up the one and only other compressor that I use, aside from the Logic compressor. 90% of the time I'm using the Logic one, and that other 20%, 10 to 20%, I'm using the Sound Toys Devil Lock. I love this compressor. Number one, because there's few controls. You don't get the option of attack and release knobs to play around with from zero milliseconds to 200 and to 5K. Instead, you get to choose, do you want this thing to react fast or slow? Boom, that's it. Number two, instead of threshold and ratio, you have crush. That's the compressor. You're just pushing more, you're pushing your track to be compressed more or less. And crunch is the distortion section. You can drive up the distortion or drive it down, right? So the thing that I love about the Devil Lock is, is it whacks your tracks hard immediately. It's a very hard hitting compressor. So the beauty of the Devil Lock is really in the mix knob. Because if you set it at 100%, you're going to compress your tracks way too hard. With the mix knob, you get the to enjoy the aspect of hard compressed tracks, but you still get to preserve the vibe and the beauty and the transients that was originally in your tracks. So you're basically using parallel compression. Because the devil lock is so hard hitting, it calls for the mix knob. The logic compressor doesn't call for the mix knob, but in this particular case, when you're driving up the makeup volume and the distortion, you're going to want to use it. So now let's dial back the compressor and find a more tasteful spot for it with this hard hitting makeup gain. And right there, we have a much more tasteful amount of distortion and compression, preserving the transients while still getting to dig up the room tone, dig up the aggression in the drums, make it sound more vibey. It's amazing. And this is all within logic. So to summarize, number one, examine the distortion modes. 
Maybe you don't like soft. Maybe it's a little too hard hitting and you would prefer clip. That's cool. That's all you. And then from there, you can drive the makeup gain up or down because this gain is before the distortion. If you turn the distortion off, the makeup gain will just react exactly like the output gain. It will just adjust volume. That's it. No distortion. So I suggest using a distortion in conjunction with the makeup gain. And third, using the mix knob to dial back the compressor. You don't have to hit things at 100%. In fact, it's a better practice to blend compression with these sort of settings. So I hope that was helpful to you. And if you enjoyed this video, I highly suggest that you subscribe to this channel or subscribe on the website, whylogicprorules.com. The website link is down below in the description. Thank you so much.